Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ralph together with Ricky Ray. We are here at the Wetterpark in Offenbach, Germany. It's autumn, it's brilliant light and I'm very happy that Ricky introduced that park to me recently. In today's episode, Ricky is going to play some Indian music with an electric bow on his guitar and we also want to show you the Wetterpark here in Offenbach, so stay tuned. Ricky, why are we going to that cube you are so fond of? <laughs> I think I took like around 100 uh, pictures in the last two days of this cube because it's absolutely unreal and it reminds me obviously of Stanley Kubrick's Space Odyssey 2001 because it's that kind of object. What is it for? It's over there. Can you see it? Okay, Ricky, so why don't you go ahead and explain a few things about the e bow you are using on your guitar. Ricky, take it away. Yes, so this is the device, that's how it looks. Inside you have a, a battery and this device was invented sometimes I think in 80s and basically it was for electric guitars. So uh, here the change in magnetic field works opposite to magnetic pickup in the guitar means in magnetic pickup in the in the electric guitars pick up the vibration of the string here is reverse the magnetic field makes the string vibrate and it's quite harsh sound on the on the electric guitar not so pleasant and and then some people like myself discovered that we can use it for acoustic instrument and then it makes this very interesting flute-like effect. I'm telling the viewers uh, there are aircrafts flying ab above us because the Frankfurt airport is pretty close to this park where we are filming right now. So, But Ricky, don't get distracted. I don't want to break your concentration. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I have to admit that the uh, first time I heard this uh, was uh, by a Turkish jazz guitarist. I, I don't even recall his name. He used it on, uh, on a fretless guitar, which made this instrument sound more like Turkish uh, flute. And on fretted instrument is much more difficult to use because when I pull the string the position here under the elbow changes so both hands have to be coordinated otherwise you lose that that sound what is the most interesting is the dream of every guitarist have this long sustained sound like the saxophone player or the violinist have and um, here I'm in purely acoustic situation, but in concert situation, in studio, I use also all kind of echoes and uh, devices to make it even more spacey. And uh, even more interesting is uh, looping the sound because you can make a like kind of synthesizer-like sound, but it's unpredictable. And if you do it in performance, it will be never the same because how the crisscross frequencies, they layer on each other, they, they, they affect each other. So you get some, some very haunting and very, very interesting uh, sounds that really penetrate your, your, your mind. And for me as a player, are very inspiring to play on top of those. So that much about the Ebo. Thank you. The idea is that you never know, the device was designed for something else and something else really came fantastically for you know I bought I have two of them because I th people hardly use it and I'm always afraid that they, they, they will disappear completely yeah there are great inventions in human history where people were trying to invent something new and then they ended up with a completely different invention for instance the post-it notes <laughs> 
the guy wanted to invent, I think, a very special glue. And by accident, by chance, coincident, he invented the post-it notes. Okay. Did not know that. And here, because you are a synthesizer specialist and you're, uh, we have to talk about, uh, mention 303 from Roland, which was designed as a replacement for a bass guitar, absolutely useless for the purpose. Until today, I regret I did not buy it. When I was in Singapore, somebody showed it to me. I said, what is this rubbish? At that time, you could get it for $100. Today, <laughs> you have yeah. to pay two, 3000 to get this piece, which people started to use for completely different things yeah. that it was designed for. Uh, so we never know. But good invention is still good invention. Maybe the inventor did not know how the artists find the use for it. So this is another one of those. And that's actually what makes a true artist. He is thinking outside the box and using equipment and gear in a completely innovative new way. Well, Ricky, this place really feels like a set from a science fiction movie and here right in the middle of Offenbach. It's just awesome. It reminds me on, as you said, you are right, Stanley Kubrick's 2001. So if Stanley Kubrick had invented a spacecraft with a recreation, nature, environment within a spacecraft, I think he would have designed it in this way. What do you say? <laughs> right, huh? <laughs> definitely, most definitely. Fantastic. Ah, oh, this is really fun. <laughs> All right, we have reached the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would highly appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. You find the link here below. And on this side, I have put the links to previous video blogs that I have done together with Ricky Ray. And over here, I have put some links to synthesizer related video blogs that I have done. So for today, I say goodbye. Ricky. Salut. Take care. Have a good week. I see you next time. Peace.